Welcome to our tutorial about object position. In this tutorial, we're going to write another quiz. Let's start by inserting two labels. We'll also insert two buttons. And let's make our form a little bit bigger as well. Rearrange our buttons a little, and the labels. Oops. Let's go back to the form. Okay, let's name our first label. We'll call it LBL1. And we'll give it the same caption as we did in our previous tutorial, a quiz. Let's change the font so it looks more like a title. We'll make it bold and 12 point. Our second label, let's change the name to LBL2. And the text property, we will ask another question. Would you like a raise? Drag it into the middle here. Now let's take a look at button 1. We're going to call this one BTN Yes. And we'll caption it Yes also. Now let's take a look at the second button. We're going to call this one No. Let's name it BTN No. Now let's write some code for BTN Yes. We're going to use the mouse enter event. Let's delete this line. The code will go like this. Dim my ver as integer. And the second line. My ver space equals int open parenthesis rnd open parenthesis and close them asterisk 10 close parenthesis next line if my ver is less than or equal to 5 then return else return here let's type btn yes location space equals space new point open parenthesis btn yes period location period x minus 30 comma, space, underscore, and enter. Again, BTN, yes. Period. Location, period. Y minus 30. Watch your spacing there, too. Okay, let's copy these two lines of code. Right-click and copy, then right-click and paste. Now let's enter a plus sign here, and here also. Okay, let's take a moment to talk about what I've done here. First, we've used the random function here. It generates a random number between 0 and 1. We multiply this number by 10, and then convert it to an integer. The resulting value is assigned to my var. The next line reads like this. If my variable is less than or equal to 5, then we assign the location property of btn yes a new value. Location X and Y represent the location of the upper left point of the object. As you've also noticed, instead of the click event that we usually use, this time we're using the mouse enter event. Mouse enter works like this. As soon as the user's mouse approaches the real estate of BTN yes, or the general area, the block of code will be executed. Let's run our program and see how it works. 
Would you like a raise? Well, of course, yes. But the button keeps jumping. I can't get it. Let's stop the program. And now let's incorporate the timer into our program. The value for the enabled property is false. The interval is 200 milliseconds. That's just fine. Let's move the if and else statement inside Timer1's tick event procedure. And let's move the declaration of this variable out. Now let's type Timer1, period, enabled, equals true. And let's maybe change the X and Y values to 20 pixels instead of 30 pixels. Let's try running our program again now. Now if I try to click on the Yes button, it keeps going, going, and right out of my screen. Of course, we can write code and restrict how far the button's able to travel. But since we're working with the timer control, let's just use the timer control instead for my example here. Let's begin by adjusting the interval to 5 seconds, or 5,000 milliseconds. We'll leave the enabled property at false. Double click. First, let's write one more line here. Timer 2, period, enabled equals true. Now inside Timer 2 Tick Events Procedure, let's write something like this. BTN yes dot enabled equals false. Next line, Timer 1 dot enabled also equals false. And next line, Timer 2 period enabled equals false. Now let's add a message box, MSG box. Open parenthesis and quotations, and for our string we'll enter something like, Sorry, try again next year. And let's close our quotations and parentheses. OK. Now let's talk about what will happen here. BTN Mouse Center will enable both timers. Then the block of code inside Timer 1 Tick Events Procedure will be executed until the block of code in Timer 2 Tick Events Procedure is executed. Let's check it out. Run our program. Now when I try to click on Yes, I get about 5 seconds of futile chasing before my message box appears. Sorry, try again next year. We click OK. And I hope you had some fun with this one. This concludes our tutorial on controlling an object's position using the timer control object.